after priming, start with an overspray of German Field Gray by Plastic Soldier Company. Works great. is going to be to wash the whole model with Army Painter Dark Tone. It's the same as Bedab Black or uh, possibly Nolan Oil. You can put German Grey on the on the helmet, um, and and that should be it for the German Grey. Uh, everything else for this particular color scheme is going to be mostly greens, but maybe some browns and some, uh, some brown greens. Using I believe either Cobalt Grey or I think I think it's Cobalt Grey. I, I can't tell because the name came off the bottle. Maybe you can identify, I can't. Alright, so here we go. Um, that, now I'm going to actually start putting colors on the model, because this was all stuff that I'd done before. So we're going to use some German field grade, and we're going to layer that onto the uniform. So our next color is going to be Russian uniform, uh, World War II, it's Russian green or whatever it's going to be called. And that's just going to be a highlight uh, on top of that uh, German field gray. As you can see, it looks a little bit jarring, kind of bright. But uh, once it dries, it'll it'll dry a little more subdued, and it'll make a nice uh, highlight over that German field gray. some black and we're going to black in all the things that are going to be black or dark gray or whatever it's going to be after highlights and metallics all that kind of stuff we're going to give it a layer of black since the models that I'm painting are technically designed to be Blitzkrieg Germans and not Normandy era Germans I decided to make the the pouch on the front of the uniform black as well, just so it doesn't stand out as much. Uh, I know it's not historically accurate, but technically they're the wrong uniforms anyway, so uh, I figure it works. And it doesn't look bad, and ultimately for bolt action, it is a war game with a historical setting, it is not a historical war game. So being 100% accurate in your uh, paint scheme isn't always necessarily uh, what you're going for. Uh, bolt action is good to think of as being a miniatures version 
of a World War II movie. There's going to be anachronisms. There's going to be historical incorrectness. But ultimately, as long as it looks good, who cares? All right, time for some middle stone. Uh, this could also be considered uh, German dunkel grab. It's the same color I use for my vehicles, except in a spray can. Uh, but in this case, we are going to be using the middle stone to paint uh, bread bags. Uh, you can also use it on the uh, I can't remember the part, but it's the, the 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 top part of the boot. I can't remember the name for it. But you can paint that with middle stone as well. Uh, I tend to vary it up on my, my Germans. Some of them have that, some of them don't. Uh, some of them, I just gave them straight black leather boots. Uh, and and it, it looks good mixing it up. Then these are the parts of the boots I was talking about. You, you can do those in middle stone with khaki highlight and everything. But I decided not to. Next up is Vallejo Game Color Beastie Brown. Uh, I use this as a base coat for all of the flesh, uh, as well as for uh, brown leather. Uh, so that's going to mean uh, any the as you see the the strap on the gun. Uh, the there's a a belt over the shoulder belt that uh, runs across the back of all these models that I use this color on as well. And uh, the canteen I will also do in this same beastie brown. And uh, that's most of most of the things that I'll do with the brown. Uh, besides that, I try to avoid using too many bright kind of browns. But uh, this, this one works well for what I needed for. It works as a nice base for leather.
Alright, we're going to use that Cobalt Gray again. And this time, we're going to use it just to do a uh, light highlight over the suspenders. Um, the suspenders and the pouches on the belt that these guys are wearing. Um, and that way, it, uh, it's not just a flat black, it, it has some depth to it. We're not looking for a whole lot on here. We just kind of want to add some texture. Uh, let it be seen that you, it isn't just a solid black, that there is some lines and shapes and folds and stuff in the material. And we're going to use the same color to do a sort of dry brush on the boots. Uh, just to, for the same purpose, just to pick up some texture. Uh, maybe make the boots look a little worn. Because uh, obviously, no soldier's boots are going to may remain a pristine, polished black in a combat zone. All right, this is Vallejo Model Air Black Metal. Uh, this is the color I decided to use for the majority of the metallics on these models because it's very subdued. It's not super bright, um, and obviously your rifles aren't going to be shiny silver. That's, that would just be silly. Because I know, like I said, it, it's, I'm not going for super historical accuracy, but realism is you know still good to add to the models. So uh, this is going to be the color I use for all the metal parts on the rifle. Uh, same for the guy with the LMG. Uh, it's also the color I'm going to use for their gas mask canisters, the shovel, uh, and pretty much all the metallics. Uh, the, the grenades they've got stuck in their boots uh, on some of the models or stuck in their belts on other ones. Um, it, it's, they're, they're all in different spots. The, but uh, yeah, any anything silvery metallic gets hit with this black.
And I'm just gonna give a wash of Devlin mud to all the stuff that I painted middle stone and to the leather parts that I painted with Beastie Brown. All right, time to get started on the flesh. This is Vallejo Model Color Flat Flesh. Uh, I, I keep my skin pretty simple on these kind of guys. I mean, they're rank and file line troops. Uh, so we're just gonna layer on uh, flat flesh right over the brown. And I'm not gonna do anything special and fancy with it. Uh, they're just a highlight and a shade to go with it, but you know. It's just soldier flesh. It's a <laughs> it's, don't have to do anything super fancy with that. I mean, I've got 30 of these guys on my army. They, they don't need to stand out on an individual basis or anything with super unique face paint, uh, super detailed flesh. Try to make sure not to paint over the chin strap that's uh, part of the helmet. But since you don't see much of their face anyway, I'm not overly careful with it. And uh, I, for ones that have, for guys that have their mouth open, I try to leave it the darker color in there. Because especially once I give them a, a wash with uh, ogre and flesh, they uh, it, it looks like a nice mouth. And then just go over that flesh with flat flesh one more time. Right, we're going to use some light flesh from Vallejo Model Color and add a highlight to their faces and hands. And, uh, not a real fine highlight or anything, very broad, you know, tops of the fingers, cheekbones, nose, forehead, that kind of stuff.
All right, now the only thing that makes my flesh look any decent, this is Ogren flesh. I don't know if Rackharth flesh is as good as it, but I love Ogren flesh. And we're just gonna do a wash of Ogren flesh over all of the skin tones. It's gonna bring down that brightness to it, add some depth, some color, and uh, in my opinion, just make it look better. Right, this is Reaper Shield Brown, and this is the color I'm going to use for all of the wood. So the rifle stocks, uh, the handles on the shovels, that's pretty much it. All right, just going to take some middle stone and uh, add a highlight to these bread bags. I know I said I wasn't going to make the metallics too bright, but I'm going to take some Vallejo Model Air Steel and just do a light highlight on some of the metallic parts and on the buttons on their uniform because after all these are 28 millimeter tabletop miniatures so the only way to make things visible is to make them overly bright overly highlighted comes with the territory uh, they're, they're not actually going to war so I, I feel like it's okay it's not gonna make them stand out for on the field of battle to be shot at easier I'm gonna get started on the eyes now. So, I'm gonna take some black, and we're gonna use that to basically fill in the area where the eye is gonna be. I tend to reverse paint my eyes, so I, I fill it in with black, and then I dot in whites on either side of where I think the pupil should be, or the iris should be. But my eyes aren't super exciting in detail. I feel the need to paint them on every miniature, but I don't feel the need to make them 
ridiculous. for the white to the eyes. All right, next up, a little Earth from Vallejo Game Color. So this is just going to be the base coat for the helmetless soldier's hair. Uh, got various hair colors in the army, but they mostly tend to be browns and blondes. You know. European hair colors. Nice and simple. Then a little bit of khaki. All right, for the base, I try to keep painting the base as cheap as possible. So this is, I think it's burnt umber. Judging by the label, I'm pretty sure it's burnt umber. It's a pretty close match for scorched brown though. And, and that's all I was looking for with it. I've had it for a long time though, so it's really hard to read. Uh, but I'm just gonna use that as a base code over the entire base. Once that's dry, I'm going to use some Territorial Beige, also from Delta. It's a pretty close match for Earth. And I'm just going to dry brush that over the base.
And here they are with the basing all done. So uh, the basing is uh, just the flock and the empty gaps where I left the sand, or where I didn't put sand. And then uh, once I have the flock all dry, I use a little static grass to flesh it out and add a couple more spots of basey goodness. And this is, this is my first fully completed 10-man squad of German hare and, and, and their henna mag. Um, I'm quite fond of the way they look. There's not, they're not super fancy or anything, but you know they're, they look good. They'll, uh, they'll pass on the tabletop. Uh, I can't be too sure that my colors are 100% historically accurate, but you know, Bolt Action is a game designed to be kind of like a World War II movie. It's not, it's not really a historical war game. It is a war game with a historical setting, and I think that's something people forget when they get all out of shape about historical accurateness in miniatures. <laughs> uh, if this was meant to be a historical war game, I'd, I'd probably be more concerned. After all, I mean, they don't have squad markings, they don't have uh, uh, company markings or anything like that. Uh, this is real basic. I might go back and add that stuff later. But as it is, I am quite pleased with these guys. Uh, if you are interested in getting into bolt action, I definitely recommend it. If nothing else, it's a nice change of pace from painting fantasy and sci-fi stuff all the time. Uh, to paint something that has a basis in actual reality and not just a passing resemblance to things in reality. Yeah, they, uh, they come out pretty good. These are the, um, the actual bolt action miniatures from Warlord Games. And uh, I'm, I'm quite pleased with the detail on the plastics. I like them. Uh, sometimes they're a bit of a pain to assemble, but that's the way it goes with pretty much all plastics. You know, unless they're all keyed to fit only one specific way, you're going to run into issues in assembly at some point. Just getting the right pieces to fit, or getting the wrong pieces to fit right. Uh, anyway, there'll be probably be more bolt action stuff coming at you on the channel, because I have an army, Spencer's got an army. Uh, we know Zach is interested in it, but who knows if he'll get into it. But uh, yeah, this is, these are my Germans. Hopefully you'll see some of Spencer's British coming at you sometime in the next uh, little while. And uh, stay tuned for more content on the channel. More painting tutorials. More uh, sitting paints. Um, maybe even some more of my Zen painting kind of stuff that's not really a tutorial, but just a, hey, watch me paint this and try and copy it if you want to. And uh, yeah, that's it for now. We'll see you later.